What's up, Found Alive? Welcome back to week two of FOL on the Move. Man, we are so excited. We got a great service for you today. I hope you guys are as ready as we are. Let's get going to our second location.
Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we believe that today you can have that same peace. Yes. So we're getting ready. We're going to move into the rest of our service. But we are so excited yes. to have you joining us all across. Yes. Not only just Sarah Land and Mobile, but I mean other countries. That's I don't right. know. Maybe there's people everywhere. That's awesome. Yes. We are so excited about what God is going to do. Pastor Ryan has got a great message he's going to bring in a little while. So just prepare your heart. Stay in the moment that we're in. And let's see what, what, yes. what's coming up in the church. This is Anna. We just want to encourage you to continue giving to the ministries of the church as we are reaching out in our community to feed families as well as still supporting our missionaries across the world. So whether that's um, being faithful and giving online or stopping by the church, we want to let you know that the church is still open Monday through Friday, 8 to 430 for you to stop by and drop off your gifts or your supplies that you'd like to donate to others. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. While you guys are at home with your families watching our service, we just want to encourage you guys to go ahead and take a selfie and post it on social media with the hashtag F-O-L-O-T-M, which stands for Fountain of Life on the Move. We just want to show everyone that we're still in this together, regardless of where we all are at right now. And we just want that to be a sign to everyone that we are still together in spirit. Right now, there are a lot of families in our community who are in need. And our church is doing our part to be the hands and feet of Jesus to provide groceries and food to these families. If you'd like to be a part of this outreach ministry, we encourage you to, you can give online under feeding families, or you can stop by the church during office hours and drop off any food items or canned goods to help provide for these families. Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Rodney. I'm so glad that you are joining us today on this Sunday morning. It is great to be able to come together through media and to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, you may be watching us through your TV or your phone or your tablet or your computer today, and I just want to thank you once again for joining us. Now, it has been such a joy to be able to come together in our homes or living rooms and worship. You know, it kind of reminds me much of the early church in the book of Acts, where the people of God would gather in their homes and worship and fellowship. Now, I believe that even in the midst of a pandemic, God can teach us and remind us that the body of Christ is the church of Christ, and it doesn't matter where we meet because we are united in Christ as one body, one spirit, and one mind. Now, these are definitely strange days, and I want you to know that we have been keeping a close eye on the COVID-19 pandemic, and we have decided to extend our FOL on the move due to guidelines that our nation and our state and local authorities have asked. We will be sure to communicate with you and everyone when we will open to public worship again. So until then, we are asking you to please be in prayer. Pray for our nation and its leaders as they guide us through this pandemic. Also, pray for your church and its pastors as we navigate through these uncharted waters. We deeply covet your support through prayer and finances. Now, God has given us an awesome opportunity in times like this to shine bright the message of hope and peace through Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I, like the Apostle Paul, I long for the return of Jesus Christ. But until his return, we must carry on. And today, I want to encourage you how to do just that, to carry on and have peace, even in the midst of uncertainty. Now, last week, I talked about fear and how you have to take control of your fear or it will take control of you. God has called us out of fear and he has given us his spirit. And that spirit is a spirit of power, of love and a sound mind. You can have access to his spirit by surrendering to his will and accepting his grace. He has freely given to you. So 
If there is ever a time in our life of uncertainty, it is now. There are many whose work has been affected. Some whose lives, who lives from paycheck to paycheck are struggling financially. We know families are needing groceries. People are needing medical attention. And it seems like everywhere we turn that there is something happening due to the pandemic. Who would have ever thought that toilet paper would be a hot commodity today? Not to mention the fear of sickness and catching the virus. Everyone has seemed to develop this internal isolation mentality where we're all doing our best to stay away from each other and for good reason. But ironically, that is exactly the opposite of what God has designed us to be and to do. We were made by God to have fellowship with one another, to come together. So, During these times, my question for you is simple. Do you have peace in the midst of uncertainty? Not knowing what your future holds can be fearful, even downright scary. But in the light of what our world is experiencing and how it is affecting our lives, our economy, our country, our schools, and most importantly, our families, do you have peace? Do you have a sense of is everything is going to be all right? Can you lay your head down to sleep and not fret over your future or over your family? Those are things we must think about. But today, I want you to know God wants you to have peace in every aspect of your life. No matter what you are going through, you can have the peace of of God. I believe that is what God wants you to have today and it's accessible. He is as close as the mention of his name. You see what it is about what is it about not knowing our future that can cause us to be robbed of peace, especially if it's at a time of chaos or war or even a pandemic. I believe peace is hard to obtain when you allow the fear of uncertainty to cause your mind to go into panic mode. So here are a few things that can help you understand how you can have peace in the midst of uncertainty. The first thing that you need to come to realize is that God is eternal and that he knows everything. Now, you may be thinking that this is very elementary. We know God is eternal, but there is much to grasp in that statement. You know, Psalms 90 verse 2 tells us that God was before time and that he is everlasting to everlasting. And in 1 John 3 and 20, the latter part says, God is greater than our feelings and he knows everything. That's right. God is omniscient. He knows it all. So, To have true peace, which is the peace of God, you have to understand that God knows your future. He knows everything. He is omniscient, as I said. He is able to direct your path because he knows what is best for you. He knows every turn. He knows every pothole of life, every disease, and every circumstances. There is nothing new under the sun, and God knows it all. I love what God tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. He says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not depend on your own understanding. Now, this is where our peace gets stolen so much because we try to obtain peace by our own reasoning. But you see, the problem with that is our mindset is that we can see, we can't see what lies around the corner. We can't see what's around the bend. Only God can. So seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Isn't that awesome? God can show us exactly what we need and know because he knows everything about us. And the second thing I want us to know is that God does everything for our good. He does everything for your good. Now, to be able to have peace, you have to believe that God is for you and that everything he does is for our good. We can have peace when we know that whatever happens, whatever comes our way, whatever tries to to take us down, God has our back. He has your back, that he will make sure that we are okay. 
One of my favorite scriptures, and many of you may know it, Romans 8 and 28. It says this, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Let's break that scripture down for just a moment. One of the things I love, he says, causes everything. You know, that means that no matter what happens in life, no matter what is going on, that he causes everything. And everything is everything. And so he causes them to do what? He causes them to work together. He causes everything to work together, meaning that whether it be good or bad or health or sickness or birth or death, no matter what it is, he takes everything and he causes them to work together. And God makes the present situation to work together for you. And how does he does it? He does it for the good of those who love God. When you put God first in your life, he will work on your behalf and bring peace in the midst of the storm. You see, you can have peace under when you learn to understand that scripture, when you know that whatever comes your way, that God is going to work it out for your good. You can have peace even in times of uncertainty. I know I want that and I know I can have that. The third thing I want you to know is that God's peace comes by understanding. That's right, understanding. You see, fear is an occupier. It will try to occupy every aspect of your mind and your life and your thoughts. Its strategy is to get you to think on things that hasn't even happened yet. You have to cast down every thought of fear and not let it take residence in your mind. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says this, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when fear is trying to occupy as it does, you got to cast those things down. Now, with that said, you need to fill your mind with the peace of God. Because listen to what I'm about to tell you. Because if you don't, you are giving fear another opportunity to dwell in your mind and all your thoughts. That's right. You see, when we cast fear aside and everything, we need to fill our mind with the peace of God. And if we do not fill our mind with the peace of God, then we're allowing anything else to come back and to really, really, you know, mess up our thinking and, 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 and rob us of the peace that God wants us to have. You see, when you understand God's word, he tells us that it will build our faith. And when your faith in God is strong, you will have God's peace. And that peace will give you rest in times of uncertainty. Now, we all need that peace and rest that God wants us to have. I know you want it. And I know I want it too. And that is something we can attain. But you have to understand God's word and what he offers to you so you can receive it. But if you don't understand it and you don't understand what God is giving you, you can't receive it. So to have peace, you got to have the understanding of what God is giving you. And the fourth thing I want you to know today is that peace comes by prayer. That's right, by prayer. Last week, I touched on a couple of verses, and I want to mention them again because it deals with peace God has granted for all of us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. Let's read it again. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now listen what verse 7 says. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. You see, when you pray, our mind is occupied with God. And when you quote scriptures in your prayer, you are building your faith in God. And guess what? In the midst of all of that, God is listening to your prayers. And when we trust him, he says his peace will overtake us and we will not be able to make sense of it. 
Because his peace has power. He says his peace is greater than our knowledge of it. Because his peace is so big and so strong and so restful that it squashes every bit of fear and uncertainty in our lives. Man, I want that in my life. Now, in the second book of Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is dealing with a lot of persecution. He's dealing with a lot of things that are coming against him. There are people that, who are opposing the gospel message, and they have attacked Paul from every side, and he's just really struggling. And, well, Paul talks about it, and, and this is how he dealt with the uncertainty of his life. And let's read it together. If you have your Bible with us, or you may be looking at the verse on the screen, but let's read it together. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experience in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. I want to stop right there. Paul was at a place in his life that he was like, Lord, if you're going to take me, I'm good with it. I don't think we're going to make it. I just, I'm ready to go now. Have you ever felt that way? And, you know, dealing with everything that we are dealing with today and the uncertainty of what's going to happen tomorrow, I'm sure there have been times that those thoughts have entered Lord, I don't know about tomorrow. I don't know about next month or the following month. I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen with our economy? What's going to happen with my retirement? What's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my children? All these things try to rob us of the peace. But let me tell you what Paul says in 9. Indeed, we felt that we have received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God. The God who raised the dead. Did you hear that? Now, God didn't cause the circumstances, but the circumstances made us realize that we could count on God. That, and this is the God who raised the dead. That means he is the God that brings life, that brings power, that brings the anointing, that brings peace, that brings joy, even in the midst of a storm. And then verse 10, he says, he delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us. On him, we have set our hope that he will deliver us again. Can I tell you right now that no matter where you are, God will deliver you again and again and again and again, no matter where you are. Wow. Paul felt like he was going to die. Do you think he was fearful about his future? I'm sure he was and it felt that way. And I'm sure we have felt that way as well. However, his circumstances made him rely on God even more. I believe Paul understood who his God was and knew that his life was in good hands. Paul knew God would deliver him. And can I tell you, God will do the same thing just for you. You can have his peace and know that everything you go through, God will work it together and you can have peace of mind in times of uncertainty. You can have peace in times of uncertainty. Listen to that. I want to conclude with this passage of scripture where Jesus is teaching those who would listen. So please listen to this passage as I read this, these scriptures and as we conclude. I believe it is what the Holy Spirit is wanting to say to us today. And it's out of Matthew chapter 6, one of my favorite chapters. And this is what it says. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food? and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you four more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have 
so little faith. So, don't worry about these things, sayings, or are the sayings, what will we eat, or what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Did you hear what I said? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And then we come to one of the most powerful verses in scriptures. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. You can have peace of mind. All you have to do is put God first and surrender your life to Jesus. I believe that is what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. God wants you to know that he will take care of everything for you. You can have peace in times of uncertainty. And the reason we can have peace is because God just said in his word that he will make sure that you have shelter, clothing, and food. He doesn't even want you to give thoughts to these things. He says people in the world, they think about that all the time. But God says, you don't need to worry about those things. If you would trust me, I will take care of all those things in your life. And I will take care of everything for you. And I believe that's what God wants for you. Do you want peace today? You may be contemplating the things that I just said. And you may be wondering and thinking, do I have peace? Do I... Do I really trust God? Maybe you want to trust God. Well, I want to let you know, I want to pray for you today. Would you join me? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes and let me pray for you? Not be distracted. I want to pray for each and every one of you today. Father, we just come to you right now. And Lord, I pray for everyone that has been listening as we've been learning about the steps we need to take to ensure our peace that it passes all understanding according to God's word, that we can have peace in the midst of uncertainty. Lord, we want to thank you for the peace that you give. It is not the peace that the world tries to strive for. It is an eternal peace, a peace that comes from you, who is the creator of heaven and earth. And Lord, there may be some folks that are wanting that peace today. And Lord, all they have to do is say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Maybe you need to surrender your life to Jesus and give him your life in your heart. Maybe you are wanting that peace, that peace and you're not quite sure how to get it. Father, we just come to you right now. And Lord, we surrender our lives to you. We want to make you the Lord of our life. We repent of our sins. We want to declare that, Father, that you are our Lord and Savior. And so, Father, as we do that, Lord, we pray for peace to come in where fear has once resided. We take away that fear. We want peace to reside. And so, Lord, I pray for everyone today that's listening and watching that, Lord, that they can surrender all to you and accept that peace and that joy. Lord, for those that believe in you, but, Lord, their, their uncertainty rattles their, their life a little bit. Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit would fill them afresh and anew right now and that it would encourage them and remind them that, God, you have everything under control. Amen. Well, it is as simple as that. As I, and I want to encourage you, if you made a decision for Jesus or, or, or rededication to Jesus Christ today, you can see a number at the bottom of the screen. All you got to do is text the word Jesus. We have a couple videos we want to, uh, uh, you to watch and, and know what next steps to take. We want to encourage you and we want to pray for you. And, and if you made a decision for Jesus, we would encourage you to call our church office and let us know so we can continue to pray for you and lift you up. We want to let you know as a church and as pastors, we are praying for each and every person. You guys are dear to our heart and we will get through this. The body of Christ will overcome. And so we do not have to worry or fret. We can have peace through everything. I want to encourage you to stay tuned as we will continue to communicate through social media and through text and email. And let us be praying together to see what God wants to do. God bless you. Thanks for joining us for Fountain of Life on the Move week two. Now you guys don't forget to take those selfies, post them on Instagram, Facebook, wherever you want to do that. We want to say thank you to Stacy and Justin Busby for opening their awesome home to us. This place is great. Uh, but look, week three is coming next week. It's going to be Palm Sunday, man. So you guys be getting excited about that. You never know where we're going to show up. It might be your house. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Look, we love you guys. Y'all have a great afternoon.